For the past 30 days, I was studying on an average of 14 to 16 hours a day at IIT Madras. Unexpected thing happened. I worked till 3. But the truth is, I was not like that before. I am an average student and I am not that passionate about academics. Wait, that how did I manage to sit and study for 14 to 16 hours a day? The answer lies in understanding the hacks video game designers use to addict you. Ah, no, take the town hall down, he needs a what really causes addiction? We feel that we are not as good in reality as we are in games. The video games industry is far and away the fastest growing. So in today's video, I'll show you three simple and practical study hacks that can actually make your studying more addictive. Along with it, I'll show you the apps and resources to create a system for yourself so that you can apply these hacks easily and getting results. To successfully make our studying more addictive, we need to understand what makes our brain gets addicted to something and to understand that I took the example of how video games doing this successfully I chose this not only because I was so addicted to playing video games as a kid but also video game industry is the highest earning entertainment industry throughout the world beating filming music and so on so in the year 2022 the annual revenue of gaming industry is 347 billion us dollars which is equivalent to 2886411.9.3 crores per year that means approximately 79000 crores revenue every day worldwide and i think it's not a proud number to share many people can be able to achieve their full potential in their life because of video game addiction and even people go extreme <laughs> Children shooting down their parents because their parents didn't let them play. A 28 year old man playing video games continuously for 50 hours and dies in the 51 hour and so and so. So why does this video game makes us so addictive? What makes our brain addicted to something? The answer is dopamine. Some people call it the chemical of want and desire. In simple words, whenever you do something and you like it, dopamine releases. As soon as when your brain creates dopamine while doing a particular activity, your brain starts to crave for it again and again. And you wanted to do it again and again, that's when addiction kicks in. It is scientifically proven dopamine influences the decision we make and the action we take. So. How does this video game creates this dopamine surge again and again? First disclaimer, many people had this notion that video games have this reward system. Because of that, it is addictive. But that is alone not the truth. There is much more beyond that. If reward alone is not the answer, then what is the answer? What is there in video games that makes us like to play like hell? The hard truth is, every successful video game satisfy our deep psychological needs just like how much you'll get satisfied when you eat your favorite piece of food or having sex there are other psychological needs that your brain had and video game designers revolve around that in this video i'll narrow down three core psychological needs that drive addiction and three more hacks that video game designers make to get more engagement followed by three actionable steps to implement all these hacks into studying to make it more addictive now the disclaimer that hacks i'm gonna share will help you increase your motivation to studying but you don't discuss anything about the learning skills and as we'll see in the later parts of the video that the more you are good at something the more you will be addicted to it since in today's competitive exams we need to be in less than one percentage to get the desired outcome from the exam and to do that one has to have the ability to learn faster solve complex problem solving skills and very good at remembering things if you are someone who is serious in becoming the one percentage in your competitive exams i'm conducting a free live class on october 3 9 pm at an academy platform where in one hour I'll teach you three scientific study hacks to help you become a pro learner. Link in the description. Now let's move on to the video. First, video game offers a sense of mastery. Video games are designed to provide players with a sense of continuous improvement. Consider the remarkable case of Roger Bannister, the first person to run a mile in under four minutes. At that time, everyone considered it was impossible. But how does Bannister done the impossible? Because beyond an athlete, Bannister is a medical student and he devised his own practice sessions and applying his scientific knowledge and guess what he saw the improvement that others can't able to see at that time and this continuous improvement is the reason despite the very hard training and setbacks motivates roger bannister to do impossible and on may 6 1954 he achieved the supposedly unattainable goal this desire for growth and excellence is a fundamental human trait i'm the best i'm the best i'm the best I am the best. Who wants to be an average? Now, let's move on to the second one. Video games gives you the freedom to do things. Video games offer you the freedom to choose your own adventure. Take for example, some of my favorite childhood games, GTA San Andreas, GTA Vice City. I played them over and over and again because 
I could do whatever I want. Whenever I want, wherever I want, even even I can kill cops and put a cheat code and I'll be free. Bang, boom, bam. You think I'm a bitch? Think about it. How many of you like being told what to do or being controlled? I bet none of you do. I never met anyone who says, "I love it when my boss tell me to what to do." Because we love freedom and everyone craves for it. That's the power of freedom. Third psychological hack. Video games offer a sense of purpose. Every video game has an emotional story that makes player feel like they are a part of the video game character's journey. In GTA San Andreas, the main character's mom was killed and he wants to find the person who kills his mother. In Need for Speed Most Wanted, the, the hero's car was taken in an unfair way and he has to beat 15 opponents to get his car back. And in Super Mario, Mario saves Princess Peach from evil Bowser. Having a clear why is a potential motivator for humans. And to elevate one's performance, the why has has to be of service to others rather than for their own benefit but very very few people or organizations know why they do what they do by why i mean what's your purpose what's your cause for example adam grant a wharton school professor studied call center representative fundraising for social causes he divided them into three groups the first group before making the calls heard the stories of the personal benefits for them the second group heard the stories of students who will get benefited by the fund they raise third student was not told anything at all Do you know what happened The research showed that first group's performance was no better than the third. However, the second group, where they made the call for the service of others, raised more as money and twice as much pledges. And you can also see the clear why in movies also. In Jawan, Ratu Singh is a patriotic. In Master, the hero kills villain because he wants to find the answer for the murder of two children. Likewise, you need to find one. Beyond addressing the psychological needs of a human that drives addiction, video games also incorporates additional scientific hacks. to make it more engagement so here are three additional advanced hacks used in video games one video games are lower in risk losing in video games usually has no real consequences tim cycle a leading expert in procrastination and author of solving the procrastination puzzle explains that we tend to procrastinate when an activity carries negative emotion for example activities like giving a speech starting a conversation can be kind of scary you know but in video games there is no real risk or bad feelings when you lose additionally there is no risk because of that it drives more engagement a study by mark grober a former nasa engineer and entrepreneur involved 50000 students he presented them with a coding question in two versions in one in one version if the participant made mistakes there is no consequences while in other if the participant makes a mistake there will be penalty points so we simply took away five no value in the real world completely meaningless fake internet points he found out that the participants in the version with no penalties were willing to make 2.5 times more attempts than the others hack number 2 Video games are not difficult. Video games are not overly difficult and doesn't lead to frustration. Have you ever noticed with yourself when you wanted to write a big assignment you will put up to do it later? That's because when something is too tough, we tend to procrastinate. I remember not finishing the 1989 version of Prince of Persia because I couldn't able to finish a particular level and eventually I can't able to save the princess. I'm sorry princess. I gave up on you. Sorry. On the flip side we also don't get engaged when something is too easy because easy can be boring for instance i enjoy playing basketball when i face opponents who are at similar or slightly higher skill level i don't like to play against kid or against expert players this concept is also known as goldilocks rule of motivation it means that humans are most motivated when working on tasks that challenges their current abilities but not to an overwhelming extent just try act number 3 video game offer high rewards human brains love immediate rewards over delayed rewards and if you want to make something addictive you need to feel immediately successful even if it's a small way there was an experiment in germany where students were divided into three groups and asked to exercise one group was given a piece of chocolate after exercising out of all the three groups once after the experiment was over after some days when they checked on them later nearly 58% age of the group who received chocolate was still doing the exercise because as james clear once said whatever gets rewarded repeated whatever gets punished avoided every video game even for small achievement there will be a lot of power ups lighting badges resources they keep giving us rewards so giving a reward will make the brain automatically like something now we understand some of the popular hacks that video game designers use to addict you but how can one use this information and making one study sessions more addictive that's what we will explore in the next part of the video where i'll simplify the above hacks into three simple action based tips which will cover all the hacks i mentioned above 
and the tools and resources which will help you make a system for your studying so addictive so let's ready to take action action step one write down your why video games always begin with a clear why for the character to move forward like mario saving the princess or cj solving his mom's murder Similarly, in studying, we need to know the clear why behind it. Why are you studying? Here's how to establish it. First, identify two clear reasons. First, pain. What will happen if you don't study? Two, pleasure. What will you achieve by studying? For example, my personal change. When I was jobless after college, I decided to prepare for gate exam. Why? Because the pain of staying unemployed and facing society's judgment would be too much. This pain kept me consistent and serious throughout my gate preparation. Similarly, Ajay, a gate topper, quits his job and prepares for gate exam because he wanted to achieve big and earn money, which is a pleasure-driven motivation. So you note down both the pain and pleasure motivation. However, to take your performance to the next level, your purpose must be greater than your personal why. So the second is to consider the contribution you can make it to others. For example, before clearing my IELTS exam, I added that if I don't succeed, I'll be jobless after IIT. That's actually pain. But I also added a meaningful reason. If I pause this exam, I can create a better life for my parents. The resource I would suggest for this tip is like simply buy a sticky note and write down your goals and just stick it in your study table where you can't miss to see every single day. Action step two, break down your challenges and conquer it. Once the story is said, achieving the goal in a video game typically involves completing a series of missions or challenges before facing the final boss. For instance, in Need for Speed, you must defeat 15 mini bosses before reaching the main boss. Similarly, in Mario, you have to clear various challenges before confronting the final boss. Here is how this relates to studying effectively. First, Break down the task into macro and micro goals. To ensure your study challenges are not too difficult, break down your study plan into smaller tasks. These tasks should be slightly challenging but not overwhelming. For example, if your macro goal is to finish chapter 2 for an exam, break chapter 2 into 3 parts. Set a time limit of 45 to 50 minutes for each part. Step number 2. Set deadline and be accountable for it. For each goal, set a deadline in which you can actually finish it. Give your best to complete in the deadline. And while studying, break down your study sessions into either 25 minutes or 50 minutes. And give a 5 minute break for 25 minutes work or 10 minutes break for 50 minutes work. And work focusedly during that time. Okay, tool recommendations for planning. You can use any cloud-based note-taking app. If you prefer more features, Notion is a great choice. But I personally use Apple Notes. Second, to help you stay focused within your set time limit, consider using the Forest app. It encourages focused work during the specified time interval. Action step. 3. Track your progress. Video games make you feel you are getting progress, convincing you that you will become an expert. For example, in Need for Speed, as you advance levels, car collection improves. Many mobile games use a similar strategy. How can we create this sense of progress in our studies? The answer is self-assessment. Here is how to do it. First, daily quiz. Take a short quiz every day to check your understanding and knowledge. Two. End of the subject quiz. After studying a subject or at the end of a week, challenge yourself with a quiz to reinforce what you have learned. Whenever you make mistakes or perform poorly, don't worry. Think of it like a Super Mario game. Consider it as a part of a learning process. Get the feedback, learn from it and level up. Repeat this process and you will start to believe in your own improvement. As you do this consistently, your engagement with studying will become boundless. Finally, a bonus idea for you all, give rewards. As mentioned earlier, our brains prefer immediate rewards do long term ones. So, at the end of each study session and once a week, treat yourself to a reward. It doesn't have to be something costly. It could be watching your favorite movie online, reading a novel or visiting a relative like your favorite aunt. For example, I sometimes buy Oreo. It is actually cost some 10 rupees only at the end of the day to reward myself. And at the end of the week, I try to go watch movie in OAT or so in movie theaters. So it kind of feeling satisfying. So in conclusion, any student can make himself or herself engaged to study. They understand the motivating factors of brain. I don't know you, it feels damn great when you sit and do hard work for something that you dream of achieving. Because if I do that, one day I can go to that dream vacation or build my dream house or get that dream girl and also achieving something is indirectly represents we are contributing to the society so take action right now apply the system definitely it will increase your heart and I'll, and I'll see you in the live class bye bye